solving by plotting the equilibrium curve on the xy plot. This can be done since we know alpha for all values of the mole fraction. It is constant and equal to 2. Next, we will draw the Q line. Since the feed is at the bubble point, the value of Q is equal to 1, and consequently the Q line is vertical. We draw the Q line from the point on the 45 degree line which corresponds to the feed mole fraction, 0.6, vertically to the equilibrium line. We proceed by setting up the overall mass balance and the mass balance on the light component. From these two equations, we can solve for the two unknown streams, D and B. D is equal to 61.11 moles per second, and B is equal to 38.89 moles per second. We know that as the reflux ratio decreases, the slope of the upper operating line decreases and moves toward the equilibrium line. Therefore, the minimum reflux ratio is represented by the intersection of the upper operating line with the equilibrium line and the Q line. We draw the upper operating line at minimum reflux from the intersection of the Q line and the equilibrium line to the point on the 45 degree line, which corresponds to the distillate mole fraction. Next, we calculate the slope of the upper operating line to calculate the internal reflux ratio in the rectifying section. The slope of this line is equal to 0.5714. The slope of the upper operating line is equal to the ratio of the liquid flow to the vapor flow. By performing a mass balance on the condenser, the vapor leaving the top tray and entering the condenser either exits from the column as the distillate or is returned to the column as liquid reflux R. By solving the mass balance, we obtain the value of the reflux rate. It is equal to 81.47. The minimum reflux ratio, R over D, is equal to 1.33. We will assume the operating reflux ratio is 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. The operating reflux ratio is equal to 2. From the operating reflux ratio, we can calculate the slope of the upper operating line by doing the mass balance across the condenser to determine both the liquid and vapor flow rates in the rectifying section. The slope is equal to two-thirds. We can now draw the upper operating line. We start at the point on the 45 degree line that corresponds to the distillate mole fraction and draw a line towards the Q line with a slope of two-thirds. Next, we need to determine the slope of the lower operating line. We begin with a mass balance across the feed tray. The feed is a liquid at its bubble point. Therefore, the liquid flow in the stripping section is equal to the liquid flow coming down from the rectifying section plus the feed stream. The vapor flow rate is the same as in the rectifying section. The ratio, and hence the slope of the lower operating line, is equal to 1.212. We can now draw the lower operating line. We start at the point in the 45 degree line, which corresponds to the bottom's mole fraction, and draw a line towards the Q line with a slope of 1.212. With the two operating lines in place, we can step off the equilibrium stages. We start at the bottom small fraction on the lower operating line and step off between the operating lines and the equilibrium line. We stop once we reach the distillate mole fraction. We count off the number of stages and the answer is 14.